plane back there, I believe, is loading right now. You can see the plane right there. No, it is a rich To the left trucks. of the, of the uh, car shack in the back there that's actually loading. You see people walking I have 51 up. staff yeah, going to work. And they're loading that up to take those folks to work uh, there. And if you notice, this is a rather large parking lot. I, I would assume this parking lot probably holds close to a thousand cars. Close to a thousand cars. We went to the first grade. One of the other uh, people that was in the truck with us was uh -huh. the parking lot. Really? So if I'm going to sneak into Area 51, it's going to start in that parking lot. I could be in the back of that pickup. So I just bought this package of nuts and chocolate. It's $1.99. I gave the woman two bucks and said, go ahead, take the penny, put it in your penny drawer. And she went, no, and forced me to take the penny. I was weird. I think we're already on our way to Area 51. No. That might be where our nukes are stored. Stonehenge in there that we can't go look at. I don't know why. The guy doesn't know why. He says they used to go get to look at it, but we can't. Secrets upon secrets. Just some footage of driving out the extraterrestrial highway. So this is the second time I've run across this, so I wanted to document it. You remember yesterday, Scooter, the personal security expert, the bodyguard, told me that my job was scarier than his. This gentleman's a demolitions uh, experience with explosives. So much gonna... scarier job. You have a much scarier job. <laughs> so there you go. High school English teacher. So far, scariest job I've encountered. The scariest job in America. That, oh, there, you heard that. Scariest job in America. We are now off the highway. This is where the Area 51 tour gets intense. These are the Longs from Ohio. Say hello. There you go. That's Andrew from New Zealand. Howdy. We've had a wonderful talk about uh, what we do in the shadows, among other things. And our guide, who you know is a demolitions expert. I'm hoping that all the footage I take ends up making a wonderful found footage horror film. So this is the beginning of, right. of the end. <laughs> I, what was your name again? I, I'm sorry, I totally forgot. Bill. Bill? Yes. That's my dad's name. And my middle name. I can't hear you over the road. Yeah, I, know. I told them the story about my middle name. I told them I was born William Robert and flipped it to Robert William because William Robert appreciates to Billy Bob. That got a good laugh when I told it the first time. See how this rock is all eroded? You know, we've got like little caverns, and tiny caverns, and big caverns. That's all from wind and erosion. The wind will blow up 
through here. I picked up the gravel and beat up against the rock and actually carved a little uh, cavern in there. And what it does is it actually creates condos for rattlesnakes. So, condos for rattlesnakes. Later on to Rattlesnakes are out. I've seen some lizards already, so that means the rattlesnakes are also out. So if you, be careful while you're walking. The odds of us seeing one are very, very, very slim. But they are here. This is their home. How high does a rattlesnake tend to strike? Uh, usually about halfway between your knee and your ankle. That's about where my boots stop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, probably a little bit higher down, actually. All right. Bill did reference the hills have eyes when he made the turn onto this road, so I'm feeling a little nervous. I'm going to save some battery for later. Still driving the backwoods of Nevada. Looking, looking for aliens. Next week we'll be in eastern Arizona. Looking for that Bigfoot wannabe they say is out there. Like the Mahonga Gila monster or something like that. But today, it's aliens. We actually had a sighting out here the night we set this tour up originally. Tell me that story, Bill. I will, as soon as we get up here on the hill. Oh, I'm gonna save some save some space then. We've had seen several jets land out here. We've seen a couple of drones land out here. We could tell that it was a very clear night, and we could tell that it wasn't like one ship, it was 20 or 30 different entities, whatever it was. And so we kept driving, and it was me and the owner of the company, Will Tryon, and we kept driving up here, and we get a little bit further, and we decided, you know, we're kind of pushing our luck, we're heading toward these lights, we have no idea what they are. So we pulled over up here, and we stop. We get out of the car. Now, Will is a aerobatics pilot. He's been flying aerobatics all of his life. And after we stood outside and watched it, which seemed like maybe 10 minutes, but I'm sure it was probably one, uh, Will goes, do you notice anything? And I go, no, why? Because there's no sound. And we're just watching these lights out here. If there been jets or anything else out here, we would have heard it. You could hear a little generator running a long ways up. Uh, so we couldn't hear anything. We're standing here watching it for quite a while, and then we see a white light just all of a sudden appear right in the middle, but below the rest of the lights. And it appeared, which seemed like in the middle, and then it went up in between the round circle and it went into the out, into outer space. And there was still no noise. We heard no noise at all. And we were right here, right where this road connects in. And we could just barely see. Oh, well, that's a cow. <laughs> or, or as they're also known, they're also known as slow elk. <laughs> uh, you so while we're standing out here, and Will goes, you know, if they start coming this way, let's go. I go, where the hell are we going to come? Man? There's no place to hide out here. So we're standing there watching it, and then we hear helicopters. And we look way off to the horizon over there, and we can actually see helicopters coming over this hill. And they definitely sounded like military helicopters, not civilian helicopters. So as they came in over the hill, the red lights all moved over to our left and off, and then they went out of sight. And 
about two weeks later. Now this was in toward the end of November, so it was fairly cold out here actually. And uh, about two weeks later, we were at a Christmas party, and Sergeant Taft, who was one of the aggressor pilots at Nellis Air Force Base, was at that party. I mean, uh, Colonel Taft. Excuse me. Anyway, Colonel Taft. We were talking to him, and then Will said, you know, this is what we saw out there. He was really excited, and so was I, right? Because I really wanted to know. And he says, do you have any idea what we saw out there? And Colonel Tapp turned around and turned his back to us and walked away. Uh-oh. Never said a word. So, whatever we saw, I'm very, very sure that he knew exactly what we saw. And whether or not it was alien in origin or U.S. Air Force in origin, I don't know. side of the fence. On the other side of the second fence. I wonder how many fences there are going to be. That might be alien dung. I'm betting it's horse or cow, but it might be alien dung. I'll do this just because it's stupid. Dung's eye view. Well, this is an incredible place for petroglyphs. Petroglyphs are basically the Indians taking chiseled pictures into the rocks. And some of them actually look like spaceships. Some of them look like uh, people in spaceships. And some of them look like people in uh, spacesuits. It's right up here on the hill. You see there's one right there. There's another one over to the left right here. And the Bureau of Land Management has to mark these by law. So what they did is they put it they put the sign behind the rock so you can't see it from the roof. <laughs> yeah, see that one right up there, Judy? Oh that's a There's another one right here. Yeah. Well, it must have camped somewhere. Like put him under a bush or something. There you go. Yeah, these. Found him. Yeah, those are the ones that featured on that show.
That right there is a drawing of an Indian guillotine. These people struggled with class warfare and they didn't like the people who were occupying the upper echelon of society. So they painted alien guillotines, carved alien guillotines into the rock. There's another one right behind me. Either that or it's a ladder. So whose land are we on right now? What tribe was that you said disappeared before Columbus? Anasazi. Oh, this is Anasazi. These were Anasazis, they were Pueblo, pit dwellers. They were all in here. There's no trace of Anasazi DNA anywhere but... Maybe with the Hopi. Maybe with the Hopi. I think the Anasazi could have transformed into spiders and disappeared. Spiders or aliens. What if they're spider aliens? Spider aliens, yes. Have you, Robert? Hi, Andrew. I mean, you Hi. look up here. That's a really good panel right there. Hey, Bill. Do you have a zombie apocalypse plan? No. Really? You know about the, the sagebrush and when it's going to bloom well and all that, but in the case of a zombie apocalypse, you don't know what you would do? No, oh, I, would, I would hide. Where would you hide? I have a place picked out out here in the desert. Just a place in the desert? Yeah. Will you tell me where it is? No. <laughs> Because I'm going to need somebody that knows the foliage in the case that, that happens. He won't tell me. He won't. Uh -huh. I guess I could just find the tour and just follow him around. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Hidden place in the desert. That means he's got supplies too. Dang it, my plan is evolving as it goes. <laughs> Just for the record, and I wish I'd got him saying it, Bill says I'm going to have trouble getting away from people in the initial thrust of the apocalypse because of living in Bakersfield. There's, we're like bottlenecked into the valley, and there's really no way out. New I'm, Zealand's fine. New Zealand's fine. They have no problem whatsoever. <laughs> well, yeah, I'm extra hobbit. hobbit uh, <laughs> you can hide out in hobbit holes for a while. Me, maybe I'm, I mean, if I'm, I'm from in Bakersfield when it happens, maybe I'll just plow north through Fresno. But Bill damned me. <laughs> he said, You ain't gonna make it. You can always go up to Sequoia and dig a hole in a tree. Sure. Dig a hole in a tree? That's like a few hours. Maybe Yosemite. Yosemite wouldn't be a bad place. So oh, this whole adventure is a video game. This is like a hidden area on the map that most people playing the game don't know about. So it's not really a side quest, it's more like a collectible. Find all of the Anasazi carvings in the nation. So I've got one of however many there are. Hopefully it's not like 200. How many places in the nation are there Anasazi carvings? There's a lot out here in the desert southwest. Uh... Gosh, you can say down in New Mexico, over the Grand Canyon. Uh, gosh, uh, Montezuma's Castle, that was Anasazi. Go down to Oak Creek Canyon, out of Flagstaff, there's someone there. Oh, I was in Flagstaff already, now I have to go back. You didn't go to Oak Creek Canyon? No, I was only there for the night. I stayed in a haunted hotel. Oh, really? 
Uh, Hotel Monta Vista. Yeah, well, you have to go down and see Chocolate Falls out in the middle of the Navajo Reservation. That's pretty cool just to get there. I'm never getting out of Arizona. <laughs> and you go to Meteor Crater. Uh, I drove to it, but it was a day I was keeping the budget tight, so when I found out the admission was 18 bucks, I decided to go back. Oh. So I will go back when I cut east through Arizona. That's when I'm going to hit, uh, what is it, the Painted Forest? Oh, uh, Painted Desert? Painted Desert, yeah, yeah, and the Petrified Forest. Petrified Forest. Yeah. Winslow, Arizona. Went through Wins Winslow. Did you oh, go yeah. downtown? Took pictures on the corner. Oh, you got the oh, whole, That was uh, great. It's all on my social media feed. Board. Yeah. Yep, I was going to cut east down into Tucson and then up to New Mexico. And now apparently I have Anasazi collectibles to find. Yeah, and you got to go to Santa Fe also. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Adding to the trip. Okay, I'm rolling now. That glint right there. Yeah, but they're not rolling fast enough to... Checking out electrical poles simply because they're in between electrical poles. Bill says that's a vehicle that is watching us. It's definitely watching us. It's actually coming toward us right now at a slow speed. I hope my phone is catching your audio. He says it's coming towards us at a slow speed. They're definitely watching us. Oh my god, this makes such a cool movie. I mean, the petroglyphs are apparently on ancient aliens, but damn, this is this would be a cool episode of a supernatural investigation show. Yeah, I don't want to be in the movie because New Zealand would be the first one to die. No right? way! <laughs> New Zealand would be the first one to have a red shirt on. It'd have to be the first person to die. You've got to keep the Americans alive. <laughs> no, but I think you would be like the second to the last person out. Oh, okay. You would almost make it because the crowd's rooting for you over the rest of us. <laughs> See, I feel bad for Bill because Bill's the expert. No, so he has to be. Go first. Yeah, he goes first so that the rest of us are clueless. Yeah, well, actually, I have, to, I have to show you how to barbecue New Zealanders. <laughs> I mean, you know, it's the best way to get the fillets off. But you almost make it. I would love to believe I'm the protagonist, but I just don't think that's likely. Well, the woman always makes it. Yeah, I think it's you. I think you're the final girl. <laughs> it's not that you're going to run and you're going to hurt your ankle. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I'm <laughs> Yep, <laughs> yep. You're, you're, you're going to play Jamie Lee Curtis. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they asked me if I'm going to need waivers for them. I think I'm in trouble with this group. <laughs> I'm giving you all your material. <laughs> All of it? Thanks. Oh, okay, some of it. Thanks, I got no yeah. credit there. You're giving me like 80% of it, sure. Yeah, do you know Taika Watiti? <laughs> Can you get him on my feed? <laughs> so I would love to sell the rights to this too. <laughs> Be a consulting producer. Just make it a comedy. Yeah, I think that's what it is. <laughs> Are we going to play chicken with them? Everything's about to go wrong. I can feel it. Everything <laughs> is about to go wrong. We're seconds away. They have to push the car. Yeah, but you're okay, buddy. You're not from New Zealand. <laughs> I'll be the one pushing. says that's a repair truck. I think here we go. Here we go, everybody. See if they're going to save us or kill us that I'm shooting them. So they say, Water Authority. <laughs> what do you think? The side of the truck's going to say Area 51 Security Patrol, Andrew? Is that how you do things in New Zealand? That's what we would in New Zealand. Yeah. <laughs> you 
effective undercover uh, speed speed cameras. It's got speed camera on. <laughs> but you think I'm lying? <laughs> no, I believe you. New Zealand's the second nicest country on earth behind Canada, right? Ah, uh, Are you nicer than Canada? <laughs> well, we were until we had 51 shootings. Oh, we're tracking your speed. Sorry, mate. <laughs> all right, off with you. My my Australian and New Zealand accents are both terrible, so thank you for giving me the opportunity to study and practice. <laughs> That's all right, no problem. <laughs>
So, you, know, you should feel privileged today. How often does it happen, Bill? About once every 10 trips out here. Ooh. We're in a chess match. You're an alien and I'm not. What do you mean? I think this is a trap. It might be. I think you're luring us all in. This is not the alien speed. It could be. I'm you on may, my toes, though. You may go back a little way. You may have to snatch your body or something. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. I'm on guard. I'm watching him. Yeah. I'm watching him. All right, that's it. What's up? Oh, I need to pass. The waitress, we were talking about Walking Dead, and the waitress went, you don't watch that, do you? <laughs> right, uh, right. Yeah, we do, don't you? And she goes, no, I don't do that made-up stuff. I do real stuff. <gasps> the waitress at Area 51 was upset that we watch Walking Dead because it's make-believe. She's in Area 51. This is Judy Long, no relation. <laughs> Towards Salt Lake City. And the reason being is that was the least populated area. So a lot of the Mormons were actually died from different kinds of cancer because of the radioactive clouds. Uh, actually, John Ford, uh, or no, John Houston, uh, one of the uh, director of Ford, I can't remember his first name. John Wayne died. Everybody, they had a little film, like a film over here in Utah, in Stoke Canyon. And one of these bombs went off in the cloud, went right over the movie set. And every single person that was on that movie set has died from one form of cancer. We're on one of the dirt roads heading for Area 51. I have limited battery. I'm at like 17%. So I'm going to try and save battery and only get crucial stuff. And maybe if I'm lucky, I'll run out of battery right as the authorities are arresting me. Okay, we're on the road, and Bill just said we're going to drive up to the gate and watch them watch us. It's like a Cuban Missile Crisis, except without Cubans. It might be missiles. We did see the nukes earlier, or where the nukes are supposed to be. And it's not 1962. I don't know, I got nothing, man. <laughs> oh, well, you know, JFK wasn't in Cuba either. I'm just saying, I felt I covered that by saying they were no Cubans. <laughs> we could be in Cuba, we don't know. Maybe the aliens have teleportation technology. I better save some battery. This is a long road. Dust cloud coming at us. Oh my god, if that's that water truck, I'm gonna flip out. I think it is, actually. <laughs> oh my god, we were right the whole time. And then he just runs headlong into us. This is the white SUV. One of those unmarked white SUVs. It could be any government agency or none of them. Uh, no, on Friday or Saturday, I came out here and I took the upper road, which no one hardly ever takes. Boy, they started moving really fast. Watching them, watching us. Yeah, let's we'll see what we go. I think they, they can hear us. Did, so. they, did they come towards you or did they go away? Yeah, they went away on Saturday. So, I'm pretty sure they can hear us. 
This so, is the road, huh? Robert, I want you to get your really good telescopic lens out. <laughs> as soon as we jump out, jump out and snap a photo as soon as you get a picture of these guys. Should I not tell you that I'm already shooting them? Oh, okay. <laughs> Perfect shaky cam documentary horror footage. Did you get a video of this road up here? This little small one? This is the Blair Witch Project. I hope I'm not successful. Well, what you have to do is you have to get one of those uh, gimbals for your phone. You seen those? Yeah. I have one. I have one in the back. <laughs> yeah, everybody can get out. Okay, before we get out, there's a little red post out there. There's another right. one down here and all the way down to the gate right down the road. That's the that's the line. As long as we stay on this line, oh, on this side of the line, okay. you're fine. You get on the other side of the line. You're, you'll be trespassing. Camera uh, daily. Yeah. These are where you might want to find your little holy rocks. Okay. Camera right down here, there's a little brown thing. R2 D2 is looking at us. Wave, everybody, wave. Yeah, Make sure I get a shot. There we go. I got 10% battery, baby. Thank you. Judy and I made friends on Facebook. So okay. We can Facebook message each other now. This is the point in the film where I start walking towards them to get the shot and forget where the red posts are and boom, catch a sniper bullet in the forehead. So to anybody watching the film and going, no, don't do that. Okay, I'm not going to do that. Oh, watch me do it. <laughs> yep. Like, I don't think there'd even be a warning shot. There'd be no puff of dirt at my feet, nothing. Ten percent. It has occurred to me the entire time now gets hit. Okay, we might just do that. We can stay another two days. Top of that hill, there's a radio tower. It's right there. I got a still of it. There's razor wire down here. Couldn't pick it up from up above. At least I could see a camera might have caught it. Jeep's still up there. <laughs> 